In this video, you're going to learn how to score highly in the SJT of the UCAT. Hi, and welcome back to the Future Doc channel where you're going to learn how to make your application to medical school absolutely bulletproof. My name's Dr. Ashley Hilton. I'm a doctor and a dentist in the UK. And today we're going to look at ways that we are going to absolutely nail this SJT section of the UCAT exam. So this video is going to be an introduction of what to expect, how to manage your time, and then we're gonna look at the types of questions that come up and an approach to tackle each one. And then finally, we're going to have a look at how you can maximize your score on each level to score band one in this final bit of the UCAT exam. So it's gonna be fast paced, we're gonna quickly whip through everything that you need to know for the SJT. So get ready, let's dive in. Firstly, what do the UCAT say about the SJT exam? They say, the situational judgment test measures your capacity to understand real world situations and to identify critical factors and appropriate behavior in dealing with them. And importantly, the questions do not require medical or procedural knowledge. So the SJT is the final bit of the UCAT exam. They throw lots of ethical situations at you at the very end when you've been bombarded with numbers and words and all sorts of stuff. That is when they lay it on thick with all these hypothetical scenarios and what the best course of action is in each of those. Think of it as the what would Jesus do scenarios of medical situations. But the scenarios are based on common experiences and situations that you may experience in the workplace as either a medical student or a junior doctor, maybe even stuff that you come across in your everyday life at school. But essentially, each situation is going to present a dilemma and then it's going to be up to you to choose the best course of action for the context of the given situation. Or alternatively, they might suggest some actions and ask you to rate how appropriate or important each of those individual items are. Now, there are some guidelines that will help direct you into what the best course of action is and give you a framework for how to think with these scenarios. And if you want to go through these in detail, I have a full UCAT course where we go through all of them and you can check that out in the description below. But essentially there are some common themes that come up in the SJT that I will quickly reel off now. These are things like honesty and integrity, prioritization, communication skills and empathy, teamwork and leadership, ethics, patient safety and professionalism as always as you are training to be a healthcare professional. Okay, so let's talk about the format, the timings and the types of questions that are going to come up. The SJT has 22 scenarios and off each scenario stem two to five questions per scenario. And in total, there are 69 questions in this section. The timing works out as always, you get that one minute of time to prepare. Then after that minute's over, you have 26 minutes to complete this section, which works out at about 22 seconds per question. And although that might not feel like a lot, people tend to say that this is their least pressured section of the UCAT exam. And the way they will ask the questions will come in three forms. The first is that they will ask you to rate the appropriateness of an action. So they'll give you a scenario, they'll suggest a course of action and say on a scale of one to four, how appropriate is this? The second type is the same, but they will do it in order of importance. And then the final thing they get you to do is ranking. So they will give you three options, three courses of action and ask you to do most appropriate, least appropriate and the one in the middle. So here are three key bits of information that you need to bear in mind during this exam. The first is to remember that you do not need any specific medical or procedural knowledge. It's purely based on what you feel is the right course of action based on the scenario that's presented to you. The other really important thing to remember is that you are asked to rate the actions that are proposed to you, not rate what you've seen in the scenario and what your feelings are based on those actions that were taken in there. And finally, the main thing is to make sure that you ask yourself what you should do rather than what you would do. Like I say, it's very much a what would Jesus do type exam. So briefly, I'm going to go into a bit more detail about the three question types and give you a three-step process for how to tackle each of them. First, let's look at the appropriateness questions. The first stage that you need to do is understand what the different levels of appropriateness mean. So as I said, they come on a scale of one to four, number one being a very appropriate thing to do, number two being appropriate but not ideal, number three being inappropriate but not awful, number four being very inappropriate. Very appropriate means that it's a very positive action taken in the context of the scenario. Appropriate but not ideal means that it's okay but not the best option in the scenario. Inappropriate but not awful means that it shouldn't really be chosen but it's not disastrous. And a very inappropriate thing means that it definitely should not be done and will probably lead to a negative outcome or worse than the situation. So once we have an understanding of appropriateness, then we read the scenario and read the actions and we allocate them into positive or negative. And then once we've defined whether they're in the top or the bottom half, we then split the hairs as to whether they're absolutely disastrous or not so disastrous or the ideal thing to do or not quite ideal but still okay. And then 
we get the how important is this questions. And that's pretty much the same thing as appropriateness, except for we need to understand the definitions of the different levels of importance. Very important is must do, important is should do, minor importance is could do, and not important at all is shouldn't do slash should ignore. One thing to talk about briefly is the scoring. If you get all of these questions in the correct order, you will get full marks. However, you still get some marks if they're slightly correct, but not in the perfect order. This is the only section where it is ranked in bands. And you basically get ranked one to four, one being the highest. And really, if you're hoping to get into medical school, you want to be aiming for bands one or two. Three things that you can read that are drastically going to improve the thinking behind your answers are the GMC good practice guidelines, outcomes for graduates, and achieving good medical practice. So this is just me touching on how the SJT works. If you want to have some in-depth lessons where you learn about all the different types of questions that come up, I have 10 modules for the SJT on my online course, as well as over 30 modules in all the other sections teaching you every type of question that comes up. But if you would like some more free videos, I've got loads of lessons on YouTube. You can check out some examples of work through questions here, and then more explanations of some of the sections here. So I'll see you in one of those videos there where we'll explain more about the UCAT to further your understanding.